Hello again, today I want to talk specifically about charging Nomad PDU from AC DC charging and right through to DC DC in car uh, uh, charging options as well as using an inverter charger unit. Having a number of issues at the moment with people not reading instructions, that's always happening, we always throw the instructions away. However, there's three pages of instructions that are very, very important and that means you'll actually have a better life of the unit without doing damage to it because you're doing the wrong things with it. Charging the unit specifically. Uh, AC DC charger comes with an AF AC DC charger. You plug it into the input here, regulated input, and away you go. Uh, you might think that's quite straightforward, and why am I going on about it? Uh, unfortunately, we get a lot of people that are charging from the green output. An output is an output. It means it's going to supply power out to your accessories, like your fridges and lighting and so on. You do not ever charge the Nomad from the green output. You only ever charge it from the input. So you've got a regulated input up to 25 amp, unregulated input up to 10 amp. So a regulated input of up to 25 amp, that's where you plug your AC DC charger in. It's very clear in the instructions where to plug it in, but people are still plugging into here. What happens if you plug it into here? That will go straight through the battery without any balancing, and that will potentially cause damage to the actual power pack. Um, and there's a series, three series in the, in the pack, uh, 4.2, 4.2, 4.2, which makes 12.6. What happens when you don't balance it, which is what happens when you go to the proper input, you go through that, what happens is one of the series will get out of balance, and you might have 4.2, 3.9, 3.7, and you'll never get the unit past, say, 12.1 or 11.7 volt. Now, this happens quite a bit with customers when they uh, bring the unit and they say it won't fully charge, and we ask them to charge, pl plug it in and charge it, and straight away, they plug it into the green output. Okay, luckily, they haven't damaged too much of it. We might be able to rebalance it. But the fact is, do not charge through the output. Okay, you will void the warranty. You will damage the unit uh, and the BMS and all the rest of it, and you don't want to be doing that when you're out camping. So always plug it in to the red input. Um, unregulated input here up to maximum 10 amp, solar panel with no regulator, plug it into the red and black poles, it goes into the MPPT controller in the unit. Maximum of 10 amp. That's not 12 amp or 15 amp, so look at the back of the panel. Does it have a regulator? Yes or no, it doesn't have a regulator. Plug it into here, maximum of 10 amp output. It'll be on the back of the um, panel. Um, the other thing that you can do is if it has an, a regulator on the actual solar panel, maximum of 25 amp. It's quite common for people to give us a call and say, look, I want to charge my three or 400 watt panel into the red and black. It's not a non-regulated panel. And I'll say, what's the rating of it? And they'll say 15, 20 amp. It's quite simple. That's a maximum of 10 amp only. So 120 to 160, 180 uh, watt efficient panel is going to give you at nine uh, amp on a really good 100% uh, sunshine day. So again, check the output of your panel and ask, is it regulated or unregulated? So that's your regulated input, that's your unregulated input, and that's only places you charge from. You never charge from anywhere over here in the green area, yellow, or anywhere else, okay? Only the red area here. Um, when the charger is actually charging, it'll have a little red light uh, that will be on over here. Now what I wanna do is I just wanna replicate, uh, if you're out in the vehicle and you wanna charge it from your uh, vehicle without going to too much hassle, what you can do is get yourself a pocket inverter. Um, you would have seen these around, all of our partners have them. And then what you can do is you can plug, this is a 150 watt pocket inverter. You can plug this in. Again, this will run at 109 watt when it's flat out. Um, see the little red light on here now saying for it's charging. And it's drawing 11 or so amp. Now this is a different unit up here. This is a power, a power distribution board. So it has a higher outputage that's allowed. So that's 11.1 amp coming out of that uh, into the uh, Nomad. And it's charging from the correct port. So I could run this quite happily for a couple of hours at 109 watt. It's a 150 watt inverter. But what you don't do is you don't grab the inverter and run a thousand watt product accessory out of these here. So that's a really good thing to have in the car. You run it for a couple of hours and put say 20 amp in. And 20 amps is a lot of amperage when you consider a really good um, quality fridge is probably gonna draw 20 amp hour in a 24 hour period or around about or 24 mark. So having these is a great option in the vehicle, but do not run them for eight hours or 12 or 24 hours. And I have had customers uh, running them 24 or seven uh, out on the campsite, uh, a lot of dirty power out there as well, and fluctuations, and uh, look, there's a number of issues that can, can cause these to fail, and they will fail eventually, because if you're going to load them up um, to their max continually, uh, eventually they will fail. So that's the inverter. Now, great to have, and most of our partners have them at the moment, and the other thing now you want to talk about is the DC-DC charging from a vehicle. So we do have 5 amp, 10 amp, and 20 amp options to DC-DC charge. So the, the value in the, the Nomad PDU is just the flexibility and the lightweight. So you can move it in and out of a vehicle. So what we've done is because of the need for customers moving from vehicle to vehicle, and they might have high vehicles, 
bands, uh, boats, etc., is we've got the 5 amp uh, Sega DC option. Now, now it comes complete, retails $120, and it comes with a complete kit, one and a half meters of lead. Now, it's a 5 amp charger that you can trickle your Nomad with. And the reason that we've got a 5 amp is simply that you don't have to worry too much about uh, moving vehicle to vehicle. And why is that, you'll say? The Sega plugs, as you'll find here, if you go to an electrical store, a lot of the Sega plugs will be only be rated very, very low C rating. And what that means is they can, they can melt with too, not too much temperature. And what you'll find is sometimes they'll only be rated for 3 amp, and then the, the shop will advise you maybe put a 10 amp fuse and it'll be fine. It's not fine. So what we've got here is we've got a 15 amp rated fuse, 15 amp rated cabling with a 10 amp fuse in it. Run into a 5 amp module, and that means that it's only going to draw 5 amp, 5 and a quarter amp from your SIGA socket. 90% of SIGA sockets and vehicles are rated for 10 amp. Okay, so you can plug this quite happily, um, and we'll use it again over here into your SIGA socket for your car, like so. You've got one and a half meters of cable, and you can shorten it. If you shorten it, you're going to get a little bit more uh, amperage out of it. And then what you can do, it's got a little sticky bit you can put on the back here. You can clip it on here, plug it into here. Okay, and then they can stick it on that and it'll sit there like so. Now that is going to charge at 5 amp. And I know it's going to charge at 5 amp because it's a 5 amp module. But if I did want to test it, I can use one of these, which is my power analyzer. And these are also available uh, wherever you get the Nomads from. And you've got to plug it in here. And it will tell me that it's charging at, you might not be able to see it, 5.07 amp. So it's going to give you a really nice 5 amp charge when you're driving along and your fridge is drawing out 1 amp, you're putting in 4 amp. There's no real need to be putting in 20 amp. When you're putting in 5 amp, you're drawing 1 amp. What's, what's the point of trying to charge it in an hour instead of leaving it open maybe 2 or 3 hours if you're doing your travelling time? You've got to run your solar panel later. Anyway, so that is the 5 amp DC kit, $120 retail, available now. And really, really great to have. You can move from vehicle to vehicle and not have to worry about any cabling. It comes with all the wiring. And nothing else is required. And again, if you want to shorten, you can. And then what you can do is you simply leave that stuck to the module. The module stuck to there, into that. And you know that you cannot make a mistake when you're charging it because it can't get over to the green. Plugging it into the red input only. Away you go, 5 amp charge. Next um, option you have is go up to the 10 amps and the 20 amps. Um, they look very, very similar. So the 10 amp kits and the 20 amp kits come with 5 meters of uh, twin core cabling. Um, all your fuses and Anderson plugs. Now, you might ask, and we do get this quite often, is I've got a, a, a Ford Ranger or another vehicle that's got a 20 amp SIGA socket. Can I run a 20 amp module and just plug into the SIGA socket? Look, the difficulty is, and the reason we've never put a SIGA socket into the 10s and 20s, is because people will end up melting something. Because if it's got a 20 amp output in the vehicle, and you're putting a 20 amp uh, module into it, you're running it at max. Um, in fact, the module will run at about 22 amp. So you're going to draw too much current, eventually you're going to cause damage, and we would never put a SIGA plug on it. Um, SIGA plugs typically don't rate at around 20 amp, they're normally around 15 amp. So what will happen is you end up melting your SIGA plugs and so on. That's why we have Anderson plugs in here, because we want you to upgrade it. And the fact is we're trying to eliminate the danger for yourself from doing damage to your vehicle. So it's better to have an overkill, like this is 34 amp cabling in here, and you don't really need it, but it's 34 amp heavy duty cabling in the unit. Um, so the 10 amp, you could typically, you could put a 15 amp SIGA plug on it um, and plug it into your Ford Ranger. We've done it many, many a time, set it up very similar to the 5 amp there you saw as a module. So it's SIGA plug in with your fuse. It's a 10 amp module, so you put a 10 amp fuse, uh, put a 15 amp rated SIGA plug, make sure the cable is rated at least 15 amp, connect to your 10 amp module, and then you can connect it to the Nomad. Okay, you can do it that way. Um, the kits are designed to give you the full length of cable to run from the crank battery. So when you talk about the simple install, simply look at your crank batteries over here. You're running your cable from the crank right through to the module. The modules look very similar to the, um, the other one there. So you'll find the 10s and 20s look very similar in the, as this one here. This is a 5 amp. Um, so the cable runs right through. Instructions in the kit. Cable runs through to the module with the fuse in between the crank and the module. And then from the module, you run to the Nomad. And again, you can put a, a 20 amp fuse between the module and the Nomad. Double fuse, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So that's with the 10, and then you can do it with the 20 amp. So crank battery through to the module, fused it. And then from there, you can go into the, uh, the Nomad fuse the game. You can also, again, get the uh, auto electricians. You can run it off your accessories or your ignition so that when your ignition's on, 
um, the power will only go through to the uh, uh, to the module. So typically, what the electricians will do is they'll run it from there, or they'll put a VSR voltage sensitive relay um, or low voltage cutout. And then what it means is when the car's off, the voltage of the crank comes down, and then it disconnects between the module. But the simple simplest way to do the dual, as long as you realise you've got to disconnect the Nomad when the car stopped, because if you've got a direct connection between the crank and here, it's going to keep on taking power from the crank. I personally do it that way because I disconnect the unit when I'm not driving anyway, so I don't really worry about it. Uh, my other vehicle's got a VSR, and that's connected through directly to the crank as well. Um, it hasn't gone through the um, accessories or the ignition, and I've just gone straight from the crank uh, right through to the VSR, then to the module, and then out to the Nomad PDU. Um, and then whenever the car's on, the voltage goes up in the, the crank, and then once it hits, I think, about 12.7 or 13 volt, it starts to let current through and starts to charge this. So you can run the full dual with the 10 and 20 amp. The kits don't come with VSRs, so talk to your auto electrician. If you're going to do it completely yourself and you're not electrically inclined, you can run it directly to the crank, which is what I've done. Fused it as in the instructions in here, through to the module, but just realise that um, you've got to disconnect it when the car's not running because it will still draw power, unless you put a VSR. Okay, voltage sensitive relay, and they're readily available, and your oil electrician will have a certain type that they'll like to use. So that's your 5 amp, which is complete plug and play, SIGA DC, no problems at all, move from car to car, and I can tell you and be honest that this will actually do the job for most people. Uh, my colleague that spends all his time up north goes away for five or six weeks. He only needs 5 amp, he runs two fridges, one 40 litre is a fridge, one is a freezer, everything else, and he gets away with just using that occasionally and a 100 watt solar panel. So he uses more than most people and he's on the road more than most people. So we're getting a lot of people wanting 20 amp and want to just charge at 20 amp. Uh, but the question you've got to ask is what are the loads you're using and what do you need? There's no real point in trying to bang in sort of 50 or so amp into these and try to get it charged quicker. It's going to take away the life of the battery. Um, the other thing is we'll get people that are trying to charge in through here. They'll have another DC uh, charger in their vehicle. Um, we'll get a call from the oil electrician saying that it won't take charge. Um, and I'll ask them how much a current and how much amp is it putting in, and they'll say 26, 27 amp. Um, and they'll assume because it says 25 amp here that there's probably a little bit of a buffer. Uh, the numbers are the numbers, and the ratings are the ratings. If you don't follow the ratings, then unfortunately you're going to run into trouble. It's rated this for a certain reason. It's 25 amp maximum input. If you put in 25 and a half, what will happen is the little red light will go off, it won't take charge, and now you've got a, a unit that has just bled off, and it's in an overcharge mode. You need to draw current out to get the switch back on. So we know that's happened, and we know there's been someone trying to put too much current in. So maximum 25 amp regulated input, okay, maximum 10 amp unregulated input. So this has an input fatigue controller inside, and again, I cannot stress enough the importance of plugging in your charging to the red Anderson only. You never, ever charge uh, from the green, and hopefully that will resolve most of the issues that people are having. Again, Plug it through to the red on a charge when you leave home. Always plug into this when you've got in a vehicle. Even when you set it up, make sure that if you're going to have an auto lefty do it, uh, make sure that they plug into the correct port as well if they haven't read the instructions or are not familiar with the Nomad PDU because you don't want them plugging into this one over here. So again, any questions, nomadpdu.com.au, info at nomadpdu.com.au and uh, hopefully we don't have any more issues of people charging with the wrong ports. Um, and we want you to have obviously a long life with the, uh, the unit and have it cycling correctly and be able to fully charge. So again, uh, we'll talk soon on some other topics. The DC DCs, by the way, um, there are some tutorials on, on uh, YouTube and also on our website. You can click on the DC DC. You can scroll down on the right hand side and there are uh, a number of links you can click on. And it'll show you all the instructions for a DC DC install. But again, don't overcomplicate it. It's straightforward. You've got crank through to module, through to Nomad, Fusing it, and then you can add a VSR if you want to. So, if you, if you or alternatively, go and talk to your oil electrician. So, again, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk again. Soon.